Well, hello again. Uh, I wasn't going to do anything else with this, really. I thought, well, this is all just fluff. Office of the Director of National Intelligence Preliminary Assessment Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. However, <coughs> having had uh, another look through it, there are two things that I think are reasonably interesting. Now, um, they're both on page five, so let's scroll through to, let's scroll through to page five. Uh, three, four, five. Right, now this is the bit that I think is quite interesting. In 18 incidents described in 21 reports, observers reported unusual UAP movement patterns or flight characteristics. Some UAP appeared to remain stationary in winds aloft, move against the wind, manoeuvre abruptly or move at considerable speed without discernible means of propulsion. In a small number of cases, military aircraft systems processed radio frequency energy associated with UAP sightings. Okay, that's one of the things that's interesting. In a number of cases, military aircraft systems processed radio frequency energy associated with UAP sightings. Now, it's, just, it's unfortunate that it doesn't elaborate on that. I suspect the, uh, the classified version would elaborate on that. What form does this radio frequency energy take? Is it wide band? Is it narrow band? Is it, is it pulsed like um, radar, for example? Because uh, that could suggest some sort of um, intelligence gathering platform, some uh, belonging to an adversary, because they might want to, um, you know, paint the uh, uh, American. I think that's the expression: paint the American aircraft with radar pulses. So you can see what the reaction from the from the American aircraft is. You know what frequencies the radars, the uh, airborne radars that the American aircraft use. You know if you light one up. Um, also, the fact that it's RF energy, um, would an alien spacecraft be using RF energy? Would it be using radio? Would it be using a technology of our time and technology level? Or would they be using something a little more advanced? You know, if they've flown across the galaxy to get here, are they really going to be playing around with radio? So that is interesting. It would be interesting to know what uh, radio frequency energy they processed, what sort of frequencies were involved, what sort of amplitudes, you know, narrowband, wideband, what modulation scheme was employed. Was it pulsed like radar? Now, the other thing too is, um, this sort of suggests to me it's uh, an, an adversary's uh, intelligence gathering platform, the fact that radio frequency energy is associated with... Uh, uh, some UAP sightings. Um, and the ones where it isn't involved uh, doesn't actually mean that it's alien spacecraft either because it could just be an, uh, an adversary's intelligence gathering platform with its radio frequency um, equipment turned off. Not active at that time. Now the other thing I thought was quite interesting, it says here the UAPTF, the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force, uh, that's uh, that's both of the uh, both of the guys uh, there in the task force, <laughs> holds a small amount of data that appear to show unidentified aerial phenomena demonstrating acceleration or a degree of signature management. <clears throat> holds a small amount of data that appear to show unidentified aerial phenomena demonstrating acceleration or a degree of signature management. That means that something might appear to move quite fast on the sensors, but it might not actually be 
moving quite fast because there may be some there may be something on <coughs> there may be some equipment on the uh, the platform <laughs> that can manipulate what the american aircraft sensors see to give the impression that it's moving fast that's what it mean, that's what it means by signature management so if they know if they know what the Americans are using to actually look at them, they could actually be trying this out. So that so the platform that's using radio frequency energy associated with the UAP could be finding out what the American aircraft actually have on board because they'll be lighting them up and they'll be seeing what their reaction is and they'll be me measuring all sorts of things that are coming from the American aircraft. Once they know what that is, they can then build something to counter that and even toy with them. And that's very well. That may very well be what this is. It's something that's that, that's putting out signals, especially sort of radio fre radio frequency energy, <coughs> that's fooling the systems on the American aircraft into thinking that these things are rapidly accelerating or they're disappearing or all that sort of stuff. That's what a degree of signature management means. The other thing uh, that that can refer to is. Um, Aircraft can be engineered to give a very small radar signature. Um, <clears throat> you could have uh, you could have an airborne drone, for example, that might have an aluminium plate held beneath it, held horizontally beneath it. Now, if you ping that with radar, it will have a very small signature. If if it then dropped the plate into a vertical position, it would have a very large radar signature. So that is signature management as well. You can make something small look very large, and you can make something large look very small. And uh, as I said earlier, you know, if you know if you know how the American sensing systems work, then you can generate a countermeasure system that can interfere with that and lead them a merry dance. It can make them look like you're jumping all over the sky. <laughs> you're big. You're small. You're at 80,000 feet, you're at sea level. Um, and that's what they report, isn't it? That's what a degree of signature management means. So out of this whole report, I'd say these are the two most interesting paragraphs. Both of them are on page five. One refers to the fact that um, <clears throat> uh, aircraft systems have processed radio frequency energy associated with these things. I think that strongly suggests uh, an adversary's intelligence gathering platform. I very much doubt an alien spacecraft will be using radio frequency energy, to be honest. As I said earlier, again, you know, it's very much a technology of our time, isn't it? It's something we can do. There's nothing sort of super duper that a interstellar, you know, a, 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 an interstellar um, a spacecraft or a probe from an interstellar spacecraft will probably have something better than that. You know, it could prob probably me measure where all the aircraft are to within two microns using the Higgs boson field or something like that. You know, it probably wouldn't be using RF, wouldn't be using radar. And signature management, again, electronic countermeasures, um, just manipulating what the, Amer the sensors on the American aircraft ships, <coughs> American aircraft and ships are seeing because they know how to fool it, because they know what frequencies they use, because they know what repeti pulse repetition rates they use, they know how they scan um, vertically, they know how they scan horizontally, and uh, all that sort of stuff. So you can build a countermeasure system that can uh, lead them a bit of a merry dance. Signature management. So there we are. That's just another very quick video. and. Um, I just thought it was worth pointing out those two paragraphs. So the only two paragraphs, I think, in the whole thing that are actually interesting. Uh, the rest of it, as I said uh, in the previous video, is just uh, it's just fluff. You know, it's just uh, same old, same old. And, uh, of course, there's no mention of the word extraterrestrial, <laughs> ET. And uh, there's nothing in there about um, evidence of extraterrestrial visitation. Having lots of aliens in jars, in sheds in Nevada. Bits of flying saucer all over the place being uh, be, being uh, you know hammered and uh, people t trying to drill holes in it at Wright Patterson Air Force Base. There's none of that. It's all science fiction twaddle. 
All right, well, uh, only a short one this one, just uh, 10 minutes, I think, just under 10 minutes, as, uh, as always. Many thanks for watching. Hope you found that interesting. Perhaps I'll catch you again.